Hey, what's up? So I had a pretty significant realization regarding my shell scripting, um, which is that I need to be making my scripts universal, okay? And what I mean by that is when I'm uploading a script onto GitHub, right, and potentially other people are using it, it should just work when you download it. You shouldn't have to manually change anything about the script in order to get it to work. And unfortunately, in a bunch of my scripts, I had stuff that was like, you have to go manually set something in order to make the script work, which is not the best approach. Okay, so an example of this, right? I have this script that just dims my display at various times. It's, you know, linked up to a cron job. So just, you know, at night it dims my display. Um, but my original version of this script manually specified my monitors, okay? And of course this script was originally intended for two monitors since I have two monitors. It's got my monitors manually specified there and it runs an xrandar command on each of those monitors, uh, which is unfortunately the worst way possible of doing this script because not only do you have to go through and manually specify your monitor names, but say you have only one monitor or say you have three monitors, you're gonna have to modify these commands here. So like this is actually just the worst way of doing the script possible. Um, so luckily somebody actually rewrote this script for me, um, doing it in a much simpler and better way, which is just looping through all connected monitors and executing that xrandar brightness and gamma adjustment on each of those monitors, which is by far a better way of doing this because now you don't have to manually specify your monitors. It will work no matter how many monitors you have, etc. So for obvious reasons, this is a better implementation of this script. So thank you to mdjames94 for editing this script here. And this sort of gave me the idea of, wait a minute, this should be the case with all of my scripts where you don't have to go through and manually set anything in the script. Um, another example of this sort of like manually having to set things um, is my system stats script with uh, CPU temperature, RAM usage. If I right click it, it gives GPU temp, uh, fan speed, that sort of stuff. This one's actually a little bit harder to make universal. Um, because it relies heavily on the sensors command, right? And the sensors command um, is essentially the output is going to change significantly depending on what hardware you have. So for example, I've got a specific AMD GPU. This is what the sensors output for my GPU is going to look like. But if you had either a different AMD GPU or you had an NVIDIA GPU or whatever else, um, this is the specific line that's got, you know, my temperature for my GPU on it, but somebody else's might look completely different. So this is going to have to be changed, obviously, to work with somebody else's system. And um, obviously the same thing also applies to, you know, CPU, fan speed, that sort of stuff. So this would have to be changed to work on somebody else's system. And if I recall, my original version of this script uh, just left in what I had and had a note like, change it to work on your system, right? Which is obviously not the ideal thing you want. The ideal thing you want is a script that you can just download and it will work without you having to manually change any of that sort of stuff. So um, Elysium AO here, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Um, what he did is he tried to rewrite the script. Um, first of all, awking through different names of potential CPU temperature sensors, um, debugging that if needed, also trying different GPU temp sensors, so uh, NVIDIA GPU and AMD GPU, so potentially should work with both of those. Also added some more different words for the AMD GPU um, because, you know, Edge is the one that I have, but somebody else might have Junction and it's just gonna depend on your specific hardware, right? Also trying different fan sensors. I think this should be a lot more universal with his changes here. Now, he did add a note that, you know, it works on his machine. Um, for me, it worked on my machine, but this is, you know, you only have so much hardware to test with. You can't possibly account for every single possibility. Um, but I think this is significantly better than what it once was. And, you know, maybe with more input over time, it could get even better. It is just sort of like, it's a simple shell script, right? So it's probably never gonna be absolutely perfect, but this is definitely better um, than it was when I originally posted it. So this sort of concept applies to so many other scripts of mine. So uh, just to go through a, a couple of them quickly, I just redid my status playing module uh, for you know showing what song is playing, right? My original implementation, the whole idea was I've got my music playing module here, but I also want it to show what the browser is playing if I'm playing something in the browser. Um, but I want that browser playing to take priority over the music playing. So say if I unpause the music here, but I go into my browser and I open up like a YouTube video, right? I want it to show the name of the YouTube video instead. And it does. Um, and if I, you know, unpause my music, there we go, whatever. But the key issue with my original implementation of this script here is that it relies 
relies on this just if block. Um, this is the key logic for the script. Um, if the browser is playing, then display the metadata for the browser. If otherwise, just display the metadata playing for the music player. And the, the problem here is this only supports two different things total. It only supports, be it a music player and a browser, or I guess like two music players or whatever. It only supports a maximum of two. And it also has the priority order pretty much locked here um, in terms of like the music status and the browser status locked to this priority order. You could, I guess, add something else by nesting in another if statement. But regardless, this is just, again, like the worst way possible of doing this script. Um, so I rewrote it to instead just use a for loop, which actually made it significantly simpler. So now all that it needs to do is just loop through the various players I have defined until it finds the first one that's playing. It will display the metadata for that playing player um, and it will just stop after that so that way I can define my players here in the priority order that I want them in so if chromium happens to be playing chromium's just cute browser here um, if chromium is playing something it will display that and it will just stop there if mpd was playing it would display that if mpv was playing and nothing else was playing it would display mpv so this can now be infinitely expanded too you could add as many players as you wanted and then I just have at the end there, um, if nothing's playing, just display what's paused in MPD. Since that's my preference, I just wanted to show, you know, whatever music I was last playing there. Um, I could change this to be like a Chromium if I wanted that, and then it would show like the YouTube video that I had paused, whatever. Um, and this actually could be um, made even better. If I wanted to use player CTL dash L to figure out what players were available. So right now I've got, you know, that cute browser uh, instance open. I've also got an MPD instance. Um, the reason that I didn't actually add this into the script as is just to, you know, have this determine the players is that I think that isn't the best in terms of priority order because that way you, you won't be able to manually specify what priority order you want your players to be displayed in. And that's also going to, by default, use every player on the system, whereas somebody might not want, like, their browser, you know, YouTube videos to be displayed in the, in the bar here. Maybe you only want, like, MPD and MPV or something like that. So, Looping through every player CTL instance probably um, isn't the best way of doing this. Um, I'm still thinking about if there's a way to actually work with player CTL but still allow a priority order. I'm sure that's possible, so maybe I'll figure out how to do that. Um, but anyways, I think this rewrite of my script is significantly better, and I also did some like other miscellaneous cleanup, but this should now, you know, just keep it to, you can specify your players here. Um, you can change, you know, if you don't want MPD to be what's default paused, you could change that. Uh, but this is significantly better than it previously was. Um, and then another script that I also made these sorts of changes in is my audio switcher script, which I actually just went over in my last video again. Um, and my my script here has my syncs manually specified, meaning on, on my GitHub, I've got, you know, these removed and just like a little note saying, go specify your syncs, right? Um, which that's not too hard to do, but you're going to have to essentially rewrite the script if you, for example, are not using Bluetooth, right? You'd have to remove this, then you'd have to remove this, and remove this, right? It's just sort of an annoyance that instead, if it just worked out of the box with whatever you were using, that would kind of be the ideal, right? Which is completely possible. And it's possible in an even shorter format, which literally just a one-liner to list through Pulse Audio syncs and then just set the default sync based on whatever was selected. So if I pull up the menu now, it's just got, you know, both syncs that are actually currently connected. I can select one and it's going to switch to that. Um, the, the only counter argument here that I think is kind of a, a valid counter argument is that on your own personal system, you might want a script that looks more like this because that way you can have your little notification colors and your names for each of the audio syncs instead of like the ugly pulse audio, uh, actual, you know, default information there, right? Um, but I think the answer to this counter argument is this is what you should be doing if you are, you know, manually making your own script for something um, versus when I'm actually publishing a script that potentially uh, other people are using, it makes a lot more sense to try to make it universal so that way you can build off of it instead of having to completely rewrite it for your system. Anyways, uh, I'm going through and making more changes on these scripts. I will see you next time. Peace.